There has been a media frenzy over the last couple of days. Man United going for this manager, this manager, this manager, and this manager. There's like seven or eight different managers that have been linked to United. I'm like, does the media even know anything or they're guessing at this point? But a reliable source has confirmed that the decision is done on the manager front, which is particularly interesting. We've also got other insight on Manchester United already making moves ahead of the summer, very planned, Ineos apparently very organised, some academy players being called up, which is super, super exciting. We've got a great young star that's going getting his first call up as well that we're going to get into, as well as just more manager news, transfer news, takeover news. But we're going to get into the more important news at the beginning of this show, and then we'll get into the manager and manager news because that's a little bit boring. So what has the Muppeteer said? Now, in regards to takeover news with Ineos, United Muppeteers has been very accurate in pretty much all the information they have put out. Nearly everything they've put out has been corroborated. One of the first to talk about Dan Ashworth, one of the first people to say that it was looking like it was going to be Sergeant Ratcliffe, been quite accurate with their information, definitely got a decent source in the loop there as well. And they said in their recent YouTube video that basically Ineos are ready to make a decision on this. In fact, they have in mind what they want to do with this moving forward. This is talking about Ten Hag and Ten Hag's future. They said it's not reactive, it's not based on results. They said the words is already done. They say Ineos have already made the decision on the next Manchester United manager. It's not going to be about results. It's not going to be about between now and the end of the season. It's not reactive. It's their decision is we want to play this way of football. We want to bring in these players. Can Ten Hag coach that? That is their decision. It's made. It doesn't matter what happens between now and the end of the season. It's made. It's done. The question is, what is the decision? Is that Ten Hag staying? Is that Ten Hag going? We've been linked to a lot of managers and Ten Hag feels that his future is uncertain. So that could be a big, um, oh, maybe they've decided to, to part ways with Ten Hag, but not necessarily told him. How does, is Ten Hag going to stay? I know Ten Hag's staying to the end of the season. We're not going to bring into him. Maybe that decision is, you know, there's so much work to do. We've never, no, no manager's really been given more than two seasons at Man United post Alex Ferguson. Maybe we stick with Ten Hag. I don't know what that decision is. I'd like Ten Hag to stay and be given time um, because I think the players are the biggest problem. I think the structure's the biggest problem. And I just think that changing managers so much doesn't help. And I do think there was a top manager in Ten Hag from what he did at Ajax, but he has lost 11 games this season. Like, we haven't been good at all this season. I do understand if Ineos sack him based on what we've seen this season, but I personally like him to be given time. Now, talking of Ineos, talking of Ineos getting to work, the United Muppeteers did say that Manchester United have already started working on potential summer signings based on recommendations from scouts and analysis. So, Man United are already working on summer signings. And from what I'm hearing, um, Elise, Branfoy, Todibo, the three ones to keep an eye on. They also really do like Cirque of Bolgana as well. But they start working on, on summer signings. Um, Elise is one that they really, really want, but that could depend on injuries. He's been approved by those at Ineos. He was obviously approved by the Man United scouts. We know that the scouts and analysts have approved Jared Bramfway and, of course, Todibo. And, of course, they're going to be approved by Ineos because Todibo is at Nice. While we don't know loads on the transfer front, we know that Man United are going to work on transfers. All the transfer news in January, February, it had to be like, guys, ignore, take this with a pinch of salt. Transfer news from now onwards, you can actually take and say, look, th there could be something in this, particularly in the centre-back field, midfield field, right wing, striker situation. They're the four areas we're looking at as well. Antonio Silva's another one being watched. And apparently there's an opportunity to maybe go for Kim and Jay in the summer. I'm going to talk about that in my live stream this evening, so make sure you subscribe for that. But I wanted to get into the news on the academy players at Manchester United. Really interesting insight coming in on the academy front. And that's the Harry Amas, the 16 year old left back that we spoke about a lot in detail uh, with obviously the left back situation injury is him. Ethan Williams, Ethan Wheatley, Louis Jackson, Habib, and Bendito Mantato, which is a really cool name, which I've probably said wrong, all took part in first team training today for Manchester United. Now, Harry Amas, Ethan Williams, and Ethan Wheatley, we've spoken about quite a lot on the channel. Um, Ethan Williams has been absolutely balling out. Uh, Harry Amas has been incredible for the under 18s. Um, and I think with the injuries that left, but we spoke about him a lot, but we've not spoke too much about the other guys. But the guy with the super cool name, 16-year-old Bendito Mantato, has been pictured in first team training. And Academy Scoop, who are like an academy-based page, they know a lot more about the academy than most people. They say that this is a player they could see fast-tracked into the team based on a combination of physical and technical qualities, an explosive direct, skillful winger, a huge 
talent. Um, apparently, he started off his career at left back and then sort of gone more into sort of right wing, left wing. Um, a lot of people have compared him to almost like a Bukayo Saka regen in terms of the type of player that he is. Uh, but because he's quite physically good, because he's technically good, they think that he's one that could be fast shot to the first team because he plays the way that Ten Hag want to play. He's, he's direct, he's skillful, but also he's quite physical for, for his age, which means he's not going to get completely bullied and pushed off the ball. So definitely one to keep an eye on there. We've got some fantastic, amazing academy players. I've just done a video on Shea Lacey. Do watch yesterday's video on Shea Lacey, breaking down why he's the next super talent at United. But whether you like Ten Hag or not, you can't deny one thing. Ten Hag does bring through a youth player a season. Garnaccio the first season, Kobe Maynard the second season. I don't think any youth player is going to break through towards the end of this season. But I think next season, this guy, Harry Amas, Shea Lacey, all players to watch out for. Potentially even an Ethan Williams next season. They're all players to keep an eye on, look out for. And I think this guy, if Tenog is here next season, from the little tiny bits I've watched him, does tick a lot of Tenog's boxes. I think he's got better potential than Forson, who Tenog seems to love. And giving more detail on him, two years ago, he was called up to make his under-18s debut at just 14 years of age. He's been very, very good for a while. And it was said, though, and this is something we've got to keep an eye on by Steve Ralston, the Man United youngster Mantato is attracting transfer interest from a handful of Premier League clubs. United are hopeful that he will commit his future and sign a professional long term deal when he turns 17 next year. But he is currently considering his options. So that's something we've got to keep an eye on for. But maybe him being called up for first team training and maybe us giving a bit more faith in him will keep him at United because from what I'm hearing and the little bits I've seen, he does give that Pukayo Saka kind of regen vibes. It looks like he could be a very, very good talent. Obviously, not every player in the academy is going to make it at the club, but the level of the under-18s right now, and considering it's mostly 16-year-olds, is ridiculous. This is, our, for me, our most exciting under-18 side in a very, very long time. Like We've had some exciting young teams, but something special about this team, something special about this team. It was then said, and I wanted to go into other comments. I want to talk about the manager situation. I want to talk about the news. But I wanted to dive into one of Ollie's comments on the overlap about players and social media. And Solskjaer was asked, are the players affected by social media? He said, definitely, 100%. You criticise players or team tactics, but when it goes above that, there are, there are so many who watch and listen and go on social media. It does have an impact. So what Ollie is saying is the players understand that they're going to be criticised, the tactics can be criticised. But when you go into a player's character, when you go in above that, that's when players, you know, take it. And I think that's why Rashford did his interview. You know, Rashford's been crap. Rashford's been bad on the pitch. Um, and he's not had a good season. But I think, you know, a lot of people have been criticising his character, which, to be fair, he did go out in Belfast and he did lie to the manager. So I do like I do understand why people are going to be annoyed about that and criticise Rashford's character. But he's obviously upset about that because when it comes to things outside of football, that's when players get upset, which I understand. Now, I do want to get into the manager news and I do want to debunk some of this information, which is why I've left it to near the end of the live stream. But it was said by Mark Ogden, who's a tier two source, that Manchester United now drawing up a contingency plan for the possible exit of Eric Tenog this summer and options are being explored to gauge the credentials and avail availability of potential recruitments. The Zerbi, Thomas Frank and Gareth Southgate are being assessed as potential suitors for Eric Tenog at United if he leaves the summer. Now, the Academy Scoop said there's no genuine interest in Ineos' part to appoint Gareth Southgate as United manager to debunk that. David Ornstein said that he could be a name United are interested in because of his relationship with Ashworth and his good relationship with Ineos. But David Ornstein said there's nothing concrete in that. And recently, according to Team Talk, Man United have been looking at the Bulgana manager, Thiago Motta, who's got some very interesting tactics as a potential replacement for Ten Hag. Again, I think all the managers were being linked to here, there, everywhere. I do think it's just a lot of media guesswork. I don't think anyone knows what's going on. But if a decision has been made on Ten Hag's future and we're being linked to multiple managers, it's a sign of, oh, could Ten Hag be going? Or it's a sign of Ten Hag is staying and we're linked to all these managers because no one knows. What's you, can't, you can't really read where it's going, but... I, I'd like to start Ten Hag to be to stay in given time, especially when there's no standout replacement for Ten Hag. But who knows? But in terms of Gareth Southgate, I don't think there's much in it because I got a little bit of information myself on Gareth Southgate and said this: nothing in those Gareth Southgate to Man United reports. The Zerbi Potter and Amarin are the top three contenders if Ten Hag is sat. The Zerbi has former coaches at Nice was highlighted in the past, but Omar Barada was potential replacement for Pep, and Ashworth had his name down in case Potter left Brighton. So we know that. You know, Ineos, Omar, Brado, Ashworth will be making decisions, do like deserve it. He appeared to be high, the highest rated by Ineos, who reportedly made a decision on Ten Hag, calling to the Muppeteers, but we don't know what that decision is. While the decision on 
in our citrus on loan, what we do know is Ineos have been making moves and planning ahead of the summer. And while De Zerbi is likely to be at the top of Ineos' list, he's also linked to Liverpool and Chelsea. So that should mean if Tenog is sacked, um, that doesn't necessarily mean we get De Zerbi despite being top of the list. But from what I'm hearing, Southgate interest isn't genuine but there is genuine interest in deserving. Now, I wanted to end this video talking about Mason Mount. Now, I don't think we should have bought Mason Mount this summer. I don't think we should spend 60 million on Mason Mount because I think we needed some of the players at six, more than some of the players at eight. And I think he had one year left on his contract. But I generally think that Mason Mount's going to show some, some importance to the team when he's back. And every day in the FC said this, I do not think we appreciate how good Mason Mount actually is due to his lack of game time this season of injuries. He's an, an excellent, intelligent presser with high stamina, ground coverage and proficient jeweler, which is something we need and miss. He's got a high volume creator and goal scorer, can have goals and assists, and he's versatile across many positions. Whoever's in charge of Man United next year will hope to see Mount fit because he's a very capable asset, and I agree. Did I think we should sign Mount? No. Would I, If we'd have signed Mount for free this summer, would I have been happy? Yeah, I would have been. He's a good player. He can play lots of positions. Out of possession, he can add things that none of our other players can. He can press. He's intelligent. He can contribute. He is a technical player that can press and do what the manager wants. And I think he has been a massive miss this season. And I think, yeah, he wasn't worth the money. Yeah, he's not played this season. But he's definitely going to have stuff to add when he comes back. Thank you guys for watching. Please do hit the like button. Please do subscribe if you're new. See you next time. Bye.